Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Karen Lavender Clothesline and today's video is going to be come along with me into my basement and pull shipping and we're also going to visit a vintage flea market that I got to go to on Saturday. So truth be told, this weekend my sales were almost non-existent. Now you would think that I would be really anxious about this, really upset, but truth be told, once in a while it's nice to have a break. I always share that and I think I've only sold maybe 10 things from Friday mid-morning till Sunday afternoon, just looking at the clock, 10 to 3. What? <laughs> it's summer slowdown. Sometimes that happens. And it wasn't until year two or three of full-time selling on eBay that I caught on that sometimes sales will be really, really low and sometimes they will just be crazy high. So I try not to look at my sale totals for the day or for even the week. I look at my month by month and every year I am still growing, which is just such a blessing to be able to make a full-time living selling on pretty much just eBay. I am doing Facebook Marketplace and sales are slow there also and I attribute it to summer slowdown. Always happens for me July and August. That's pretty much why I take vacations this time of year and I don't get anxious about it. So if your sales are super slow right now on eBay, that is expected for most sellers. Now there are sellers that don't see any slowdown, just amazing. But just know that some days I can make $1,000 or sell $1,000, I should say, and some days I could sell one thing and it'll be $40. I try not to get anxious about it. Now, if I saw a really, really low total for a month, then I would start to look at it and say, okay, what's going on? So today we're just going to pull the few things together and I'm going to bring you along to a vintage flea market that happened yesterday in Lancaster. Um, what street was that on? I don't even remember. I saw it come into my Instagram and it is a Lancaster based vendors vintage flea market. I'll, I'll put all the information in the description and I got to hang out with a few friends, always great fun, see what people are selling. Now a lot of times I don't go to these types of flea markets to purchase, although I will purchase for myself, but I don't go to these flea markets to find items to flip. I go to these type of flea markets to educate myself. I am still all about learning what is trending, what is selling, and I think no better way than to go to local flea markets to see what other people are finding and what they're selling. So there are other platforms that a lot of people sell on, as we all know, other than online platforms. A lot of people do flea markets, they do auctions. There are so many ways to be a reseller. I love that about this business. You never know, maybe someday I'll do flea markets and I'll no longer sell on eBay. I can't even imagine that could happen. But let's go into the basement together. Let's see what's sold. I will try to tell you what I paid for items and of course show you the screenshots for what the items sold for. All right, and then after that, the flea market. And after that, I got to get busy and really ship this stuff out. All right, hit that like and subscribe button. And as always, go out and get what's yours. All right, so this is probably going to be a record short video <laughs> because only a couple of things have sold. I've got my phone in hand. Let's get started. The first item, uh, David Carey Originals. This is a button-down shirt, Day of the Dead. I have never heard of David Carey Originals. I picked this up when I was in Virginia visiting Jay and Ryan Scavenger Life and I saw this and I said, oh, this is too good. I'm taking this. So we're going to go ahead and grab that. Now, as you guys know, I sort my stuff by type and this is a button down. So it will be in here under prints. Let me pull this bin down. All right, so these are all my button-down printed shirts. Most of them are like a Hawaiian print, you can see. A lot of, lot of tiki-looking shirts. And here is the one that sold. Now, like I said, I don't think I saw any comps for this, but I said, this is too good. First of all, it was a 2X and men's shirt, 
with Day of the Dead type skulls on it and roses. So I thought this was really just such a good print. All right, so this sold for $27.55 and I believe I paid $2.50 for this. All right, the next item up is a Pottery Barn Napa dining chair cover. And this sold for $20 plus shipping. And that will be here right in this bin here chair covers. This one's on the lighter side because I don't pick up a lot of chair covers, but when it's Pottery Barn or a similar brand, I'll go ahead and grab it. That's what this looks like right here. And I believe I got this at a yard sale and paid $2 for it. So we'll just pop that back on. And as usual, put the bins away at the end. And like I said, that one was $20. Item number three is a pair of Soft Walk Women's Comfort Shoes. So let me just drop these items on this table and we'll go over to shoes together. So a pair of women's shoes, Soft Walk is like an Oxford slip-on and my women's shoes, I have dress shoes on this side and flats and Oxfords on this side. So let's see if we can find these with this lighting not being great. You know what? I'm actually going to go into this item and see what it looks like so that I have a good idea of what I'm looking for. Okay, this has like a cap toe. It is dark. Oh, these are them right here, I believe. Yep. Soft walk. And these brought $16.81. And I might have paid, I'm trying to remember what I paid for these. I believe I paid $7.47. So not a great deal of profit. And would I pick them up again? Yeah, probably. <laughs> so I think these might have sold because they are an 11 narrow. And um, that's a very unusual size in my opinion, because most times if the foot is an 11, you know, to have a narrow foot, very interesting. But anyway, $16.81 and the buyer paid shipping and I paid $7.47 for them. Okay, the next dress is gorgeous. I don't think I have folded it yet. And as you can see, I did not take the plastic off of any of the clothing because it didn't sell a lot. When I sell a great deal, all of this plastic comes off to pull. But these are dresses over here. Sorry if it's very crinkly. And let me see if I can find this dress. Now, if I can't find the dress, you guys know the drill. That means I folded it. And I might have folded it because I am not seeing... Up oh, here it is. Let me pull this one down and bring it into the light for us. This is the brand Magic. I do not pick up every dress with the Magic brand. But this is what this looks like. Very prairie... Um, cottage core, just beautiful. And I believe a viewer bought this, Kelly. Thank you, Kelly. I appreciate it. $57.42 and the buyer paid shipping. The next order are two shirts, Tommy Bahama. They are size small, 100% silk. One buyer bought two for $36 plus double shipping, which I will refund the extra shipping paid and I will send them out together. I always do that whether the buyer requests it or not, as long as I can tell that it is the same buyer. Sometimes if it's a breakable piece and um, it's not safe to ship it together with the other item purchased by the same buyer, I will go ahead and ship in two separate packages. But for the majority with clothing, I'm always happy to combine and refund the overage. So let's go pull Tommy Bahama. Now this is part of a large Tommy Bahama pickup I did, two shirts, and I will put inventory letters on them when that happens. So we'll pull back this plastic here. Hopefully this angle is okay. Very dark. Sorry guys, I didn't want to hook up lighting. All right, so these are the shirts here. And this is T, S, let me go this way, A. I think this is the first one. It is a black silk. I will bring that into the light. And I think the other one that sold is D, letter D. Here it is here. All right, let's bring these two into the light. So the buyer paid $36 for the two, so $18 a piece, and I paid $4 a piece. So that is what those look like. Tommy Bahama makes beautiful clothing, in my opinion, especially when it's a silk or linen and it's got the button down. I like the wood buttons. And that is what the label looks like. And you can see I put a little 
sticker that does not leave any residue on the shirt, and I will pull the sticker off the inventory sticker. But this assures me that I'm sending out the correct shirts when I have a large amount of shirts in the same pickup, same brand. All right. Let's go on to the next item. So the next item that's sold is a Viking saute fry pan. I think I see it right over here on the metal shelf. Yep, I still haven't labeled the shelves. I keep talking about. See how I label my shelves like glass, pottery, or this should really be cups. This probably used to be pottery, and now the pottery is over there. I want to get all of the shelves uh, labeled, but because I bought a new computer, I still haven't figured out how to do my Dymo printer for make creating labels. That's what I want to say. And I have to work on that before I can label these shelves. But this is the fry pan right here on the metal shelf, and this is Viking. So I didn't even have to know that Viking would be, you know, a good fry pan to pick up because their appliances are wonderful. So let's see what this sold for. It's got like a honeycomb pattern in it. And like I said, right away, I knew that this was good. Now the pan does have a little bit of, I don't know what to call this, residue here. I did give it a good scrub. And that's what it looks like. And this sold for $43.50, and I picked this up for $2.99. Next item is a Monterey Bay size 10 blazer jacket in an aqua color. I don't even know who Monterey Bay is, and it only brought $13.33. I am thinking that I probably picked this up at a dollar sale, because I don't know that I would have picked up Monterey Bay. But let's go ahead and pull that. So the jacket is a size 10. I said that, so that's medium. It will most likely be in here. Jackets, medium, greens, and blues. So I'm going to, yep, I figured it's heavy. Let me put the camera down and just open up the bin for us. So this is probably better lighting for you guys. Neutral jackets, medium, greens, and blues. So neutral would mean I would put beige in here too. Monterey Bay, let's see if this is it here. So here it is, Monterey Bay, size 10, and $13.33. I'm pretty sure I picked this up at Community Aid at their dollar sale. So um, not a lot into it, but not super great profit, but I'll do that. This took me five minutes to list. Just photograph quickly and list it, and then I pack it and put it away and never give it another thought until I have to find it to ship it out. All right. Flax Women's Large. It's a linen skirt. So skirts are down here. I love the company Flax. A lot of the items don't sell as well as they used to. I judge Flax, um, you know, items like that, Eileen Fisher, those types of brands, lag and look. I judge each piece by the style. I felt this style was very good. Okay, so this is going to be in this bin here because it is skirts, large, solid. This is my inventory number of when I last did inventory. Let's see if I folded this skirt. Yes, I did. So here's the skirt right here. And what did I say this brought? This brought $31.32 and I paid $4.50. Okay. One more item, guys, and that's all we're pulling right now. Now, I would think that tonight I'm going to have sales, but I bet you tomorrow morning I'm shipping out under 20 which some weekends I can do 60 or 70. So an especially low weekend. But again, I'm not worried about the sales. I think that, you know, a lot of people are on vacation and just not at their computer shopping. So it really doesn't, you know, drive me crazy. So the last item was a bid. Um, somebody won $30. Was one of the Walt Disney Mary Poppins dolls. I got these at Goodwill. Let's see if I remember where I put them. Okay, Easter bell. Oh, it's going to be in this bin right here. I picked up about four or five different Mary Poppins dolls. So let's pull this down. And here it is right here. So this is Walt Disney's Mary Poppins. And it came with the doll and some clothing in this cute little handbag. And the buyer won it for $30. I believe I paid $2. So as you can see, I have another Mary Poppins up here. I think I showed this on a haul video. And that's what that looks like. This is quite, quite large. This is all from, I believe, 1964. True vintage. And 
yeah, I was thrilled to find them. I didn't even have to run comps on something like that. 1964 Mary Poppins in decent shape. I will do that all day long. All right, guys, so that is what I'm working on shipping. Those items there, the two Tommy Bahama shirts, and the magic dress for Kelly. Thank you, Kelly. All right, if more sales come in between now and tomorrow, I will put screenshots. I won't pull them with you guys, but I'll put screenshots so you guys can see what actually sold. Thank you so much for watching. Go out and get what's yours. Here I'm just going to finish off this part of the video with a few more sales that did come in. And the first one I found quite funny because right after I spoke about this Disney Mary Poppins doll and showed it to you guys, it sold $69.02. I was super thrilled with that sale. This pair of Tom's boots also sold. I've only had these probably for about two weeks, $29. I paid $7.47. Here's a pair of L.L. Bean uh, women's hiking pants. I've had these for a while, $18.27. I paid $4.25. This is a dish that I wasn't quite sure if I'd pick it up or not, but I went ahead and took it. I believe I paid $2.99, and it brought $21.46. And this last item, a marmot jacket, $28.99, and I believe I paid $7.25 for this. So those are the few more sales that came in. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned for the next part of this video, which will be the vintage flea market that I went to. In this part of the video, I just wanted to share a market that I went to on Saturday. This was Lancaster holding a vintage revival market. And I knew that a few people that I know that are sellers were going to be there. I always like to go and support other resellers. I love that in this field, in this line of work, there are so many different ways of selling. And while I don't really do flea markets, I definitely attend them. And I like to keep my prospects open. You never know, maybe someday I will have a booth at a flea market. So today I headed out early and went to this lovely site. I believe this barn is used as a wedding venue and they had about 35 different sellers there. Now the main part of it was handmade items and vintage items. And like I said, I always like to keep an eye on what people are making, what they're selling, what they're finding out in the wild, and maybe learn a thing or two about different vintage items. So let's take a look at a few of the booths and the vendors I visited, and I will put a screenshot of their business cards. In case you see something that you like, you can go ahead and message them. Most of these people are on social media and different platforms, Etsy and the like. All right, let's get started with this photo montage, and we will take a look and see what the market looked like. I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see From up here The world seems small We can sit together It's so beautiful You and me meant to be in the great outdoors forever free And 
to be.